Hi, and welcome to this video on mastering Netbox user access using permission constraints. So a couple of weeks ago, one of our students from the Netbox Labs uh, fundamentals training asked, how can I limit a user to only see certain devices within a site? Now, this is an amazing question because to be able to answer this, you need to have a good understanding of all of the different Netbox permission features. So it's a great question for learning Netbox and how to control that user access because you need to kind of dovetail and bring these different features together. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at what Netbox is. We're going to then cover the different elements of the Netbox permission features. And then we're going to then dive into the permission constraints within Netbox. Good stuff. Let's go. Okay. So first of all, what is Netbox? So Netbox is an open source IPAM slash DCIM, and it's built upon Python Django. And you'll see why it's important to know that in a second when we dive into the permission constraints. But Netbox allows you to model and document your infrastructure, and it acts as a source of truth for your network. Now, it provides a whole range of different automation features as well, such as various APIs, REST, GraphQL, and also it has great integrations with config management frameworks like Ansible and Nornir. So ultimately, you've got, I'll just quickly show you Netbox here. You've got Netbox, you can model your sites, regions, you can model your racks, you can get rack elevations, you can model your devices, you can model all of the various components on these devices as well. So it's a great tool, highly recommend checking it out. But let's dive into the Netbox permissions. And what we're going to do is just cover some of the, the main features of the permissions before we kind of dive in deeper. Okay. So we'll cover the various features of the Netbox permission feature set before we actually look how to configure our original question of limiting a user down to only seeing a single site's devices. So let me switch over to my other instance, which we're going to use for today. So here I'm using 361, Netbox 361. And within 361, the permissions for users, the, the groups and permissions have been moved to this front UI, which you can get to here, okay? Originally before that, you would have had to gone into slash admin, okay? Okay, so as you can imagine, you can create users and you can create groups. So there's nothing, there's nothing too crazy there. And to create them, you click on the plus, you go through, you put in your username, the password for the user, and some additional information. So that's, that's all good. Now, the other thing to mention is we can assign these groups and these users permissions. And if we go in and we add a permission, and give our permission a name. So and perm test. And so we get a few things. First of all, we get actions. So we can define what the user can do. Can they view, edit, delete, or add various objects? And then we can define what objects they can perform these actions against. And these are all of the different objects. So all of these objects here will relate to things that you can see within the UI. But the thing at this point is, let's say we, we go up to here and we select device and we say that they can view, add, change and delete device. And we assign it to say this group. At the point we click save, this is all good, but every single device within Netbox, they're going to be able to add or delete, et cetera, right? We need a way to be able to add more granularity to these permissions and these restrictions or access that we, we're going to apply to our users. And this is where Netbox constraints come in. So basically, it's this here. So what is a Netbox constraint? So a Netbox constraint is basically a way to constrain the access that the user has on these objects, okay? So here with the device, for example, we can constrain it against that object 
so they only have access to devices of a certain name devices of a certain site etc cetera, etc cetera. so how does that work so what we have to do in here we have to define basically a, an expression a constraint expression if you like and it's that which we're going to look into now and to see how that that actually works okay so for our example of just saying or let's let's change this to rather than be device we say site so we've got that site there okay so we assign these permissions and then this is going to give the user access to all of the sites now what we can do in here is we can say any site with the name of site a just restrict the access to that that site and then what they can do is only perform actions these actions defined against this site so that's all good and that's great but to be able to configure this we need to know a little bit more and we need to kind of know really what's going on i would say under the hood and and what this is all about because this is going to allow us to know what we can put in here and how we can build out some really really good expressions okay so we're putting in json here but what's actually happening under the hood is you're passing in json which django is actually passing in into what's known as a query set so within django a query set is basically used for querying the database okay so like the name suggests it's a query set so it's just a set of queries that is going to be applied to the database it's a higher lab level abstraction mind you because you don't have to write the, the raw sql statements but it's a higher level abstraction that allows you to use these these methods and these expressions to be able to query the database and get the data back now query sets are lazy so at the point that you write the query it's not going to run that against the database it's going to only run those queries against the database at the point that you do an iteration over the the query set etc so let's kind of take a step back and dive into netbox and look at what a query set actually looks like okay so what i've done here is i've got netbox running and i've just jumped into the container and i'm in the directory so what we do is we jump into the netbox shell all good stuff and what we're going to do is we're going to import the device model Now, this is really just to show you a, a query set in its true form. You don't really have to worry about this per se. It's just, you know, it's just showing you how you can construct it and what it looks like. So it's going to make it a million times easier when you're actually creating that, that expression for the query set on the front end within the netbox permission constraints. Let's do a filter, a query set filter for any devices with this name. Okay, that there, like so, and we can see our response. Again, to the first element, we can see we've got our result there. So, what's actually in that result? So, let's have a look at the attributes, and this is then going to give us the field names that we can query against. Okay, I'm going to just import. Pretty print because I've not got rich installed. I'd normally use rich. And we're just going to use the dunder dick dunder to look at these attributes. Okay. So this is what we've got here. So for this for this device. Okay, we've got all of these fields and these fields are, are populated. But the other thing to mention with query filter set expressions, if you like, is what we can also do is well, before I dive into that, what I'm going to say is if we wanted to do this within the constraints of Netbox, we would have done this, okay? So within that box, that constraint box, okay, name and the value there, okay? Now that's that's okay. So what else can we do? Okay, we can do quite a few other things as well. So rather than just doing name, we could also do things such as name contains, okay? 
So you've got the field here, and then we've got contains, and then we could put in part of the string like so. So that's all good. And then you can do I contains if you don't want this to be case sensitive. You can do ends with, et cetera, et cetera. But we can also do is we can also look at the related fields. So on the back end, you've actually got all of these, these models, which are basically database tables, have various links into other tables. So for example, there is a link from site into device. So for example, if we wanted to say, how can I pull out the devices only for a single site? So I've got site ID in here, but I don't actually want to provide just the site ID. It's going to be a bit of a pain. What I can do is provide the site name by doing a related field query set like so. So this should really be, I'll just take that out for the time being. So you can put in site name and in the case for the device that i'm on at the moment because i've jumped into the okay. site it's going to be called nebula okay so what this is basically saying is off of this off of this model form a query set filter and against this this model use this related field and off of this model then pull out this name it should be nebula and we've got all of these devices okay and it's this syntax is these expressions that we can now we can understand and we can apply to netbox and the netbox permissions okay so let's look now at how we configure Netbox to limit a user for a given site and the devices in that site. So what we would do is create a user here. here. We create our user and we just call it, in this case, just user one, and we would just assign it a password. So that is it. So we do that by just clicking on add. We'd then create our group. So click add here, write in the name of our group. And then we assign our user. Don't need to assign any permissions at that point. And we click create. Okay. And that's what we've got here. It's got, this is the site name. This is the user. Don't worry about assign permissions yet because we're assigned the permissions when we go into here. And so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to create three sets of permissions. Now I'm not going to go through and create them bit by bit and show you on here because you can see all of the different config settings within the screen, but I'm just gonna step through how this fits together. So we've got our first permission here, which is gonna be assigned to the site object. And we're gonna do all of the view, add, change, and delete against that. And we're gonna assign it to our group. And then we're gonna do this query set. Okay, so this query set filter is gonna say, only allow the user to do all of this on site A. Now we have to do something a little bit different for our devices. So what we do is now pick up the device object and we're going to say, again, allow them to do all of these things. We're going to assign the group, but here we're going to use this related field. We're going to say on the related field of site, the site name of site A. Okay, so that's all good. So now we've limited, limited the user to only see a certain site and devices within that site. But there's a further complexity to this, which is how are they going to see all of the different components for those, those uh, devices? Now, at this point, I've not put in a constraint. Okay. So they just, I've just allowed them to see all of the components for all of the, all of the sites. And here is the thing that you need to understand about using these constraints is that at the point that you've specified this object, each object is going to have a different set of fields associated to it. So your 
expression here is going to be and your filter is going to be a little bit different because there's going to be different fields for that object that you're going to need to specify and work with. So if I was to put in something like name here and site A, this isn't going to be available on these different objects. So you're going to need to slightly tune your, your constraint filter here for whatever objects you're, you're specifying, okay? Which you can do because you've got the granularity, but you just need to build it out more and more. So that's within this example, the user is going to be able, is going to be limited to the site, to the devices, but at the point where it clicks on interfaces, you'll see all of the interfaces, okay? So you'll need to kind of expand upon my example if you want to kind of further kind of tune this and, and restrict the user down. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to show you today. So I hope you found this useful and it helps you understand on how the Netbox permission feature set works and how you can configure it within your own environment. And as you can see, you know, Netbox provides a huge amount of functionality and flexibility when it comes to permitting and restricting user access. So thanks for your time today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.